Hey, welcome back to the Guillemot Kayaks Workshop. I'm Nick Schada and we're working on the Micro Bootlegger Sport Strip Built Sea Kayak. Actually, I filmed this episode at least a month ago. Could have been more. Since then, I've finished the boat we're watching being built here and I've gone to the Wooden Boat Show. I've gone up to Maine to teach a class and the boat's been packed up and shipped off to the customer. But I haven't had a chance to edit all this video. So now I'm taking that opportunity and getting this episode out to you. And I've got a few more episodes in the can waiting to be edited. So what we're gonna be working on today is doing some final sanding on the seat parts, the backrest and the seat itself, and then putting finish on the bottom of the boat. What I'm working on here is sanding these smooth. Um, I just cleaned off the blush and now I want to get uh, this sanded nice and smooth and cleaned up a little bit. So I'm just going to sit down here with the sanding block and have at it. So first thing I'm going to do is just clean up these slots a little bit. I've got a couple different uh, foam sanding blocks here. I don't know if this company exists. These were sent to me as samples, of the original Sutherland sander. Um, they're just some different stiffnesses of a closed cell foam. And, you know, I use mini cell foam for making something similar to blocks of styrofoam. You can make a nice sanding block, just a little handy size. And so, um, I'm going to start out with a stiffer block and some 80 grit to just sort of knock down the high spots on this. Same principle as with the boat, we're sanding it down until all the shiny spots disappear and we get a nice uniform matte finish on it. This seat has a lot of sort of fish eyes in it and stuff. So when I uh, did the last, before I did the last fill coat, I sanded it out, but um, I must not have cleaned it all that well because these uh, fish eyes like right there are just sort of caused by contaminants on the surface, making it so the uh, surface tension drives the epoxy away. So I need to sand this whole thing down to get down to that level um, and, and smooth it out. So let's see what we can do. I'm using a 60 grit here on both the random orbital and the block, sanding block, um, because these are quite deep and I just want to get them down and then I can start getting rid of the scratches. See, I'm trying to get rid of all these little dimples there. 
those fish eyes. And so I need to sand down to that level. The uh, underside of this is actually in quite good shape. Um, it's quite smooth already. I'm not going to start with this coarse of grit. I'll start, start right out with uh, 120 and uh, get it scuffed up. And then work up to 220. Now I'm going to flip the boat over and put some finish on the bottom. I'll mask it off at the water line and I'll also hang some masking paper down on the, below the water line, on you know, this side of the water line. So if I splash the varnish at all, it doesn't get onto the stuff that already has varnish on it. Um, I tend to be a little sloppy when I put the material on, so. You got a little bit of gunk on the bottom there. So a little bit of uh, the varnish must have spilled down onto the foam here and it adhered some of that foam to the bottom of the boat. So we'll just take and scrape that off. This is an eight to one mix. So I'm gonna be using this scale here, which is the eight to one. And last time, yesterday, I was going up to a five or six point. So you first, you go up to your number here, and then you go to the same number in the next column to get your ratio. And so yesterday I was going to five or six, and that was just about enough 
to get the whole boat. It, it was enough to get the whole top side. Um, the bottom side is smaller, so I'm going to start with like a four, and so I'll go to this number and then that number. Straight to the four. Let's see if there's anything left in this. And they say to clean off the top so it doesn't. It all stuck up. All right, that laid down pretty well. I was practicing their one stroke method, um, worked on not dipping the brush quite as deeply. Um, they say to dip the brush a quarter inch. Um, and so I was working on that. The first stroke tends to dump a lot of material. And so if I double stroked that area to pick up the excess from that first stroke and then moved it around. That seemed to work pretty well. I, you know, we'll see what this looks like as it starts to set up. This is definitely an easier surface to work with than the top side. Everything's much more level. Um, so there's much, if I start that first stroke on the level surface here, it's much less likely to create a long sag because it just doesn't have as much gravity working on it. So I'm gonna try and get the four coats on today. Um, it's two o'clock now, so I'll be back in an hour or so. So the second coat laid down pretty well. It's looking a little bit better here at this stage than yesterday with the deck. Um, again, leveler surface, less complicated. There's still some drips and sags and so forth, but overall it's looking better. So being careful not to dip the brush too much and then sort of sopping up that excess on the first stroke. So double stroking the first stroke and then spreading it from there does seem to help. Um, I'm still learning. All 
All right, last coat on the hull. Um, this will be coat number four. And uh, when I'm done, I will peel the tape off. a whole lot better than the uh, deck I did yesterday I had the doors open to let air go through here it's really smelly stuff and I think I was getting a lot of dust there's a lot of dust in the deck um, fill but uh, you know there's brush marks all over here I've got some sags this isn't acceptable as far as a final product but again, I think I've got sufficient build here. I can level this out and then either very carefully brush on a final coat after that, or um, I'll, I can try my rattle can spray stuff. So I'm going to peel the tape off, um, open the doors, get, let the stench out. It's really bad smelling stuff. So that's it for this episode. I got four coats of the Bristol finish on the bottom. Um, it didn't come out great, but I'm not concerned about that. My plan all along with these four coats was to sand it out, level it out, and then the show coat's gonna be the last one. And my plan is to spray that on with a two-part rattle can. So it doesn't matter that this finish isn't perfect. It was good practice. I learned a lot more about using the two-part brush-on finishes, and I think they have a lot of potential. They are harder to work with than a standard varnish just because they dry so fast and the smell is an issue. So in the next episode, I'll sand it all out, level it out, and prep it for the final finish coat. So I've got about four or five more episodes in the can waiting to be edited to finish out this project. I really appreciate the support of everybody who's watched these videos, either through liking the videos or subscribing to my channel the, and the Patreon supporters. I'm really honored that you've all paid attention for the 63, 64 episodes it's been now. It's been a lot of work and there's been a lot for you to watch. I haven't exactly figured out what my next project is. It's in the middle of the summer right now. I've got some classes to teach. Um, I'm gonna be going up to Maine several times, once for an on the water um, kayaking class at the Wooden Boat School and another strip building class also at the Wooden Boat School up in Brooklyn, Maine. I've got a vacation coming up and I'll be heading out to Port Townsend, Washington for the Wooden Boat Festival. Um, early September, late August, something like that. And I also have my Scudic Retreat coming up in late September. So I've got a lot of stuff that's going to preclude me doing some big projects, but I'm going to see what I can fit in. I do have a dock to work on here in my yard. Um, I may make some paddles, something like that. We'll see what we can fit into the time I have available. But again, I really appreciate all the support you've had. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, hitting subscribe, hitting like, going over to my Patreon site and providing some monetary support. It really does make a difference. This is a lot of work. Just building the boats is a lot of work. If I throw in taking video at the same time, it slows the whole project down. This build I started back in January and essentially I promised the customer a three month build and we're in month seven now. Um, I got it done in about six months but all of this video work did slow the project down a bit. And I'm hoping you are enjoying it. And if you're interested in more videos like this in the future, um, it's your support that makes me A, want to do it, and B, with financial support, that helps me afford to do it. And so the monetization on the videos and the Patreon supportage, all that really helps. And it, what helps the most, if you're interested in building your own boat, I have a couple books out on strip building boats. One, the Strip Built Sea Kayak is kind of the Bible on building kayaks. And my Building Strip Plank Boats book um, goes over the details of building any small boat using the strip planking method. And beyond that, I have plans for all the boats I build available. 
So if you like the micro built leg or sport design and building here, I have those plans available back at my guillemotkayaks.com website. I have the petrol play from the previous build and I've got a lot of different designs. It's probably something that you'd be interested in and that buying those plans is a big help for me. That's really the primary business rationale I use to justify spending the time on these videos is hopefully people will be interested in building their own boats. I really like spreading my love of boat building to other people and getting other people involved in boat building. These videos are my way of spreading the word on the fun of building boats and hopefully you will want to build a boat and even if you don't build one of mine go out there there's lots of plans out there lots of people have interesting boats to build i have a nice selection of kayaks as well as some canoes and rowing boats and there's probably something there that you'd enjoy building and it's a lot of fun there's really nothing better than getting out on the water in a boat you built yourself so once again i really appreciate your support in any way through patreon through just watching and hitting like um, your comments are support if you have questions, post the questions. Um, and buying plans and just watching the video is supporting what I'm doing. So until the next episode, thanks for watching and happy paddling.